Hi, my name is Brian Capo, and welcome to this week's Ask Brian, part of our weekly newsletter. In this week, I'm going to answer a question that I was actually already thinking about, and then someone asked, and so I thought I would talk about it. And their question, as they stated it, boiled down to, is regression a special case of machine learning? That, that was kind of the way they stated the question. But um, let's just take deep learning for a second and think about all the techniques that are kind of putatively a special case of deep learning. So uh, a single layer perceptron will wind up giving the same predictions as logistic regression if you choose the correct kind of activa activation function. Uh, linear regression could be seen as another single layer per perceptron with a specific uh, identity activation function and so on. Multinomial regression could also be considered. So many of these statistical techniques could be considered special cases of deep learning. So in, in one sense, if you think about that, in, in some sense you can think of as machine learning as really mostly containing a lot of the, you know, regression, regression E techniques, right? And, and that includes things like linear models and even things like splines and, 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 and things like that. I, in fact, as I, as I do more studying on uh, deep learning and neural networks, I'm, I'm a little surprised at how many things are in fact special cases. But before I, before I you know, kind of endorse this way of thinking entirely, let, let me maybe offer a contrary opinion. Um, when you think about it in terms of this, this way of thinking, you're thinking, can I take a machine learning algorithm uh, put in some data and obtain the same coefficients and predictions that you wind up with with regression? And the answer to that is yes, you can. These, that, and, and, and in that sense, this equation is, is clearly correct. But and in that sense, you could say, okay, well, machine learning is containing huge subsets of the field of statistics, but that, that statement would be incorrect. And the reason is because in addition to just producing predictions, what statisticians tend to like to think about is how sampling assumptions and how a generative model uh, connects to a population. So and that's typically missing in machine learning discussions unless someone's talking about theoretical machine learning where they start making sampling assumptions to prove asymptotic theory about machine learning algorithms, but that's usually done by people who are effectively statisticians. So what I would say is it, on one level the inference problem is clearly a statistical problem and there I would, I would actually put the, the subset in the opposite direction in that yes, um, you know, all of machine learning, if you think of it as an inferential technique, then it subsumes in the statistic, the, the collection of classical statistical ideas, which is really concerned with the idea of inference, generalizing from your data to a formally specified population via a collection of assumptions, including things like sampling assumptions and things like that. Um, another, I, I think, big difference, which is less easy to, to specify, is the fact that when you talk about these regression, regression-y type approaches, logistic regression, you're very much so focused on the model itself. Parsimony is a, is a direct concern that you're interested in. You're, you're directly concerned with the coefficients, whereas when they're described in, say, a deep learning algorithm, they're just weights and they're less interesting than the actual quality of the prediction. So I think when you're focused on regression models, there's kind of an implicit assumption that you're interested in the coefficients and the parameters that determine the adequacy of the prediction. And so as an example, you know, you might have data that looks like, like this, right? And you might fit a linear regression yeah, and you're, you're very interested in this slope. Now you might be able to fit a more complicated spline that actually gets all this, this minute behavior and, and you might be fitting that correctly. You might be fitting true signal and not noise, but, but there's, there's something about 
summarizing this with a slope and just saying, yeah, kind of in aggregate, things go up about this much for every unit change in x is inherently useful. And that kind of parsimony and thinking, uh, a reductionism of the problem is often very useful. And I would say that is a hallmark of regression style approaches that, that really doesn't carry over to most other machine learning approaches. So I, I would just say it's it's not as much at the forefront of your thinking when you really tend to think about problems in a machine learning sense. So I would say definitely um, it's, uh, I, I'm less concerned over what uh, subset of what and, and, and what things you tend to be focusing on when you're approaching a problem. And when I think of myself as approaching a problem as a machine learner, I tend to be thinking about prediction performance as a number one priority and everything else is secondary. And when I tend to do things like linear models and model fittings, then I tend to tend to be interested in things like inference, parsimony, and interpretation. And so in that sense, I don't think the two, either one is contained in the other one. Okay, so that's my answer to that question. Uh, let me know what you think about it in the comments. Uh, of course, ask a question. The link is in the video description below. Subscribe to our newsletter and uh, I'll have another video for everyone next week.